Chinese health authorities are still working to identify the virus behind a pneumonia outbreak in the central city of Wuhan. According to authorities, the number of cases has increased to 44, with 11 of them in serious condition. On this Monday night, coronavirus confirmed in Canada. One official case, another presumptive case. Breaking news tonight, the grim milestone, the U.S. overtaking China for the most coronavirus cases in the world. Last evening, I announced that we had lost the first of what will become many Pennsylvanians to the novel coronavirus. But you know, before we can save livelihoods, we must save lives. And so I will be working with local officials, permitting authorities, and others to enforce mandatory closures. We will be using every tool possible to ensure that we are mitigating the spread of COVID-19. Hey, my name is Rich, and as you can see, I am coming to you from pretty much the middle of nowhere because that's how we're doing things right now. <laughs> so for the first time doing one of these videos, I'm not exactly sure how to start it. I'm not sure what to say. I kind of have a morning routine on a normal morning anyway where I get up and while my son's getting ready for school I'll make some coffee watch the news and every single day you turn on the news and it's usually weather related <clears throat> something has happened to isolate an area and this is just unprecedented in the fact that it is Everybody. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm, I'm not really here to explain how we got here. Everybody knows that by now. I'm just here to just kind of document it. I mean, I've, I've said many times I make these videos because, you know, people my age, they'll look back kind of like on a photo album for memories and stuff. And, you know, my children, I, I make these videos so years from now they can look back on the things we did and I kind of like going through an old photo album. So about a month ago, when this was all happening, I kind of, I started thinking, I should probably document this. So I grabbed my camera one night and I took a ride down through town and sure enough, um, during what would be normally be six, five, six o'clock rush hour, people going to restaurants to treat themselves to something to eat, people getting ready to go to the movie theater to see a movie. It was just nothing but closed. Everything shut down. I remember right out of high school, a blizzard came through this area in 1996, and I remember it well. The governor went on television, he gave a speech, and he basically said, the state of Pennsylvania is closed today. Children on sleds are about the only ones who are mobile in this snowstorm. Earlier today, the state extended a travel ban for most drivers until 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Only emergency workers, PennDOT road crews, and people who deliver milk or oil, doctors and journalists are allowed on state and local roads. I know it's happened before, but that was the first time and the only time in my lifetime that I can remember the government stepping in to do something. And they basically shut the state down for 24 hours and it sent just everything. What's gonna be the repercussions of this? It's, it's just gonna, everything is gonna be discombobulated. That was 24 hours. Think about that. And it's strange too, I've always kind of joked that the word post is a part of our normal everyday vocabulary now. And I'll tell you what, that's nothing compared to what we've been hit with in the last four or five weeks of terms, words, and phrases that are going to become part of our everyday life and I think our everyday vocabulary for a long time to come. So where exactly am I headed with this video? Uh, I really don't know. Uh, like I said, it's more of a documentation purpose. Um, as of this recording, there are over 32,000 cases of this COVID-19 virus in Pennsylvania. And as a result of that, there's uh, close to 1,200 deaths. 
nationwide there's about uh, three quarters of a million cases and uh, I believe there's around 40,000 deaths. If these stipulations have not been in place, could those numbers have been double, triple, or even more? Possibly, probably. But people are getting restless, you know? We're going on the fifth and sixth week of this, and people are getting restless. Uh, federal and state governments have implemented some additional resources for people, but for the most part, they haven't come through yet. I will say this, I do find it kind of odd that in 2020, in the most technically advanced time that we've ever been in, I do find it a little strange that three million people can log on to a website and watch Garth Brooks singing some songs, but you can't log on to your state computer system to provide information to them. Schools in the state of Pennsylvania are shut down for the remainder of the year, and given the the time of year and the timeline that they're dealing with, I think that was probably the right decision. Um, you, you couldn't, they couldn't keep stringing along of a week here and a week there. This country in general, though, and especially this area of Pennsylvania, they have a great, strong education system, so I have no doubt they'll be fine. I kind of have a theory with the whole, in regards to the whole school system, you know, if you take a 13-year grade school through middle school through high school timeline and you deduct the one quarter that they're going to miss, that's what you have left. So they're going to be fine. One thing I, I wouldn't mind seeing, I think that they should do a little more of, I wish that they would do a little more, and this is just my opinion, I think that they should, you know, the kids that are in kindergarten through 11th grade, they're going to be fine. They're going to, all going to be there next year. They're going to rebound from this good. Like I said, our educators are good at what they do. They will transition into this nicely come next year. But we've got over 300 seniors in this area who are navigating colleges who are in disarray. They are thinking about joining the workforce when the nation is at its highest unemployment rate ever. So I'd like to see them, I think they should just put all of their, a lot more resources into those seniors. You know, there's a little over 300 seniors, there's a little over 300 teachers. I mean, you know, could be a one-on-one, one-on-two -on -one, one -on situation that could offer a little more personal guidance. A lot of stuff pretty much on hold right now as far as summer plans, you know. Um, I have my son's a typical 11 year old. He looks forward all winter to getting out and hitting the baseball fields, but and we're right in that time right now where we'd be really the season kicking in. And of course, the baseball fields are empty right now. And I, I don't know what'll happen this summer. They might be able to get a little bit in, but they might not. You just, you just don't know right now. And I'm like everybody else, I, had some ideas, some plans for this summer. Everything is pretty much on hold for the time being. We'll have to see what happens. So where do we go from here? Uh, I'm really not sure, you know. Um, how long do we continue to take a walk or drive up our main streets and see closed signs on 50% of the, the businesses? I don't know. Is there a new normal now of going to a place of business and there being a separation between people? I don't know. I'd definitely like to do a, a follow-up to this, um, but I have, I don't have the answers, you know? Will that be next week? Will it be two weeks from now, a month from now? I don't know. I don't know. We'll just have to keep on 
going and hopefully we'll move in the right direction and uh, we'll we'll get past this we'll see what happens I have no doubt that the spring and summer from the year 2020 is something that's going to be talked about for a long time to come. And there's a saying right now that we're all in this together. That's true to an extent, but we are indeed all different. Every person in every situation is different. Reach out and give a call to your family members, or by all means, Send a message or a text to that friend that you haven't talked to in a while. I have no doubt whatsoever that this area will come back stronger than ever. At the same time, this has been a rare instance of labels. So if you're out and you see that person that's been labeled essential, by all means, give them a word of appreciation. But at the same time, if you see that person that's been labeled non-essential, that's not a bad thing. Make sure you give that person a word of encouragement. <laughs>